lecture 20 is second order of Chiman based non nave non free constitutive laws. We already discussed about a lot, right? And then the emphasis is in this case the validation using molecular dynamics. So uh, we are interested in what the MD will tell us. So therefore, I will explain the MD setup. And then, uh, basically, this is a very well known problem. I think the first MD simulation on that probably detected this problem. But that's too easy. You have some uh, molecules, and then uniformly apply now, gravity or external force. Then you are reaching steady state solution. And then it's all made of post processing. So, in our case, all we couple process. So, one needs to post process those MD uh, output to produce some microscopic quantities like. Uh, Density, velocity, temperature, and the shear stress, and also heat fluxes. So I will talk about that. And then finally, what the solution look like. So this is the uh, MD setup. So I. So this is based on based on these papers. So this was published last August. So I got the runner, I think right now he is in the uh, United States, University of Warwick, and I post up. And then the J.H. Park was one of my colleagues uh, who was training as post up in the Korea or you are UC, the Alulu. Professor Lulu. And then I asked Professor Park to guide my students to run and this force driven of water flow. So the, it took two years. The first this Ravi Chandran, he was master class student. And he, he set up all the things. He learned LAMS software from Professor J.H. Park. And then Generate several uh, months later, he generated those velocity and so on. But I wasn't interested in velocity. Uh, my analysis showed that velocity is something the easiest one can get. Therefore, I emphasized that uh, other things. Later, he bring uh, some temperature on, the some viscous, but never pressure viscous heat flux and so on. So I wasn't satisfied, and then it took about three years, and then I decided to bring the postdoc and the doctor Rana, and then he did it six months on those results. So that indicates, even though in the end it's a very simple one, conceptually not that easy, I will explain that. Uh, by the way, because as I explained, the post-driven project flow is very few benchmark problems in which those second order only analytical solutions exist in form of tangent. But there was published in 2011 after some scholars. By the way, I, mean, I emphasize sometimes uh, the paper you're most proud, many cases rejected in the first and second trial. I will show you. So this is the first uh, review report. Analytical solution uh, for the first driven project flow. Uh, probably, uh, if I was one, young, then probably I was very, very obsessed by this kind of reviews. But at that moment, in 2011, I had enough experience uh, from other papers and so on. I know that human nature, in particular, the theorists, 
we all competitors. So uh, therefore, you cannot get a uh, very high compliment from your peers. Always very harsh for So that, that's typical. Because you spend 10 or 20 years, and suddenly some guy presenting something how better than yours. Not necessarily better than, somehow. Not that easy to understand, then this is a typical one. I mean, as I told you, this problem has nothing to do with boundary condition. So this anonymous views, I don't know who he is, but he is attacking other condition I use number one. That's a typical uh, gimmick you can find from some reviews. Be careful about Don't keep up. Because this is something, I mean, he's talking about Basically, what he said is, it's Dandi. Why are you solving this one? <laughs> <laughs> and he couldn't present content function like that. And then attacking what is it? I don't see any nobility in these papers. And then, moreover, to use the Langmuller slip jump model, which is wrong. Of course, wrong or not, it doesn't matter here. Uh, therefore, this kind of things you can find the first. Uh, try to publish good results because the important thing is at stake, which means that therefore, whenever you got this kind of the, the rejections, then you have to tell yourself, oh, I have something good. Yeah, it is just a matter of time, matter of will, just spend a couple of days, forget these things, and then continue to work, and then keep fighting. Then you will find good reviews and so on. During the process, you will find the solution. Sometimes you can find your own mistake by doing so. So the thought, important one is, in particular you are working on the as a PhD candidate, let's say five years. In many cases, after graduation, your job career, depending on the general publication and so on. Therefore, you are in a hurry. So one or rejection, so let's say first year you submit two papers and then you think they are very good results. And then you are thinking using that two papers, my resume become not bad, I can find some position, some good institute. That's your plan, right? Then you got the best of your results, you receive this kind of rejection, what can be your response? You will be extremely disappointed. Then blame yourself, bad luck, and so on. Don't do that. The better strategy should be, don't submit just two. Prepare three or four. So not only just one subject, but also slightly different subject. So that's a very difficult strategy. So anticipate best of your work can be rejected at the first time. So you will be disappointed. In order to avoid such one, you should better prepare another paper. So in particular, young career, that should be very important. I mean, your resume, there's no peer-reviewed good general publication. You are in big trouble. I mean, without strong computer recommendation from your supervisor, I mean, explain why he didn't have that kind of things. Otherwise, in all those screen, hundred applicants, and you don't have anything, then everybody is busy, you cannot be really post through it. The lesson is, I mean, you take breaths and prepare long times. Which means that in PhD, the third or fourth tips, yes, should be extremely productive. You must work like that. Anyway, so this is what I got from that one. So now, now it's okay. I mean, no problem. This one. Uh, I didn't run by myself this lens code. My students, my first activity. But during the process, my role is simple. Bring your results. Explain me what you are changed. 
the first thing I did is, why is no cell number in your MD simulation? And because I'm inter I didn't interest in, <coughs> I was interested in MD itself. I was interested in validation of the second order concept of laws using MD. Therefore, my objective is different. Therefore, all results must be compared to the continuum theory, which is, I explained, the tangent, all kind of events. So first of all, you have to make sure that you are solving the equivalent problem. What was input? Epsilon H and the number. So I asked her, I shouldn't bring what you are the number is. So I realized that the MD, not like this form, they have this kind of form. So just I compare it. Then the question is, probably I know that even though the member of that previous solution, Lusa number 21, I think this is not a match. It's a match. It's more like point. <laughs> something like that. So, in the beginning, I demanded their like derivation is difficult to exact match. So anyway, this is the definition of the number in the case of molecular dynamics. So, we make sure that we are solving at least close to the number problem. So, the result should be interpreted that way. This is a typical one. Uh, fluid atoms were separated by 100 Armstrong. The wall is, we assume, platinum. And then the all wall atoms with the mass, platinum, this number is diameter, this one. Arranged in six layers, each width of face center, cubic, lattice, and so on. I think this is a typical, a very typical music. Interaction between the fluid wall atoms model by LJ shifted the force potentials with the cutoff distance as 2.5 sigma. So I asked my students, first of all, bring everything data you use and put everything into the general papers in order to let other people can reproduce the exact same thing. You have to make sure that there's no, there should be no missing data. So this is or those data. The one was LJ potential. So in order to specify some LJ parameter, there is some parameter, like this one. I do use R1, monatomic gas, platinum, this kind of potentials. And so So if you are interested, or then some range, what I love, mixing rules, something like that. I'm not that uh, good at all those details. Let's provide it, but anyway. Uh, among those options, we use those kind of things. The flow is generated by external personal force, which is gravity, exit directions. <coughs> and then wall is maintained the constant wall temperature by Berendensen, Somerset, and a couple of days ago, I mean, professors discussed about these things. And then the channel dimension is this big. Simulation demand is periodic in all three dimensions, similar to the method adopted in previous uh, the works in this uh, same problem. So those are all the description of how we calculate it. And they perform 70 million time steps with a time step of one, what is it, Apple? Pepto? 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 second. Anyway, it's a very small <laughs> number, I guess. The integration we learn about this burlap algorithm, the microcanonical ensemble. I think, it, I guess those things are typical in the RAM software. The key point is this part. The, por the process, it took one or two years to figure out how to process this thing. The average result across the channel was obtained by dividing the channel into the number of the equally divided beams. So you have channel height, then you divide beans, and then you took some average on that. The beans value were then time average for a number of time steps. The properties of average for all the atoms in each bean, which resulted in a representative value of that beans. The spatial averaging were performed across the channel by binning method with 80 beans, similarly to the steady state after the first 20 million 
of time steps, and then probably will average for last 50 billion steps after reaching the steady state. The test in each bin was then obtained by counting the mass of the total number of electrons. Finally, the problem of pressure, the unconjunctive variable. The pressure and the stress tensor heat flux vectors were calculated by the Irving Cockwell equation. I will explain later. The calculation of the pressure and non conjunct variable, in particular normal viscous stress, conjunctive member, those things is the Newton layer effect. Directed from the molecular data using the statistical method, turn out to be extremely important. Since it is not possible to validate, comes to law, unless you have those kind of data. I couldn't find such a thing in the previous literature. Even though MD, I mean, it, more than 70, uh, no, no, 30, 40 years old, many applied these things in the gas, but the, I couldn't find any papers show all of these things. The simulation was performed using the open source MD the labs. That's it. So this is what you have done. <coughs> so this is the Irving Cockwood process. They published not only one paper, about five papers. So you can find their papers. So it's not that clear. You have to figure out by yourself. So this is prepared not me by Dr. Rana, the first order of the paper. Then I asked him, please summarize four or five slides so that I can deliver what he has done to the Jiang participants. This is this is summary. So let's say a molecular system can be described in three dimensions in terms of molecular position RT and then three momenta, which include the velocity PT for n molecules at a time t by a probability function like this one. Now the evaluation equation of the expected value of the n property alpha is obtained by a ring cup evaluation equation like this one. And then the, those uh, angled bracket notation defined for ensemble average like this one. The formula with our statistical average in the velocity space. And then in the case of everybody hypothesis, I mean you can approximate this thing is this kind of the time average. So this is basic concept. And then macroscopic variable. Remember, we are talking real molecules. So MD provides those positions and velocity with the time and so on. In the end, that beam, AD beams, you have to calculate what density was there, temperature there, shelf viscous flow, the stress and the flux. They are uninterested. So just like the, the statistical definition, you have the densities. This is more like delta functions, <coughs> they might. So this is a well-known expression in this molecular uh, dynamics. And then you have the momentum, momentum like this one. You have the key here. Temperature is P square, and then you have this kind of thing. Anyway, this is the equation we use for conjoint value. Density, velocity, temperature. And then this is just a uh, uh, proof or checking of whether or not we are doing fine. Taking the derivative of the both sides of previous equation, applying a recovered evolution equation to give macroscopic mass conservation law like this one. The density time change must be balanced by flux of the this for you. So this is again the, the mass conservation law. So uh, we did it right. And then I guess this is moment of conservation. So the time derivative, and this is the, of, uh, the flux. And then the uh, probably x will be force. So it's like this is moment of equation. Then this is the viscous stress and other terms. Uh, the pi k here, in summary, I mean, those things represent these terms. Pi k is kinematic contribution to the pressure tensors. Pi v is the first order in homogeneous from Irving and the coupled formulation. So this is how we calculate these things to satisfy moment conservation laws. And then this is uh, the 
expression of further pressures. The inhomogeneous contribution based on moving in top order pressure, the PV is more like this one. This expression, hip flux is like this. So this is the equation we use when we post the set of those molecular data. Then, again, okay, now I'd like to remind you uh, why we are doing, again, this is analytical solutions. We haven't seen before. This is a second order, the last shear constitutes law. I see a thinny because shear stress is always smaller than other stocks. And then, uh, the special term is approximate as the, the, the first order, then this is Grass, constant law. As you can see, color is relatively similar. And this is normal stress, normal stress constrained by stress constraint. The, because this is not zero, the pressure becomes non uniform <coughs> So you are interested in these kind of things. And also, this kind of free, non free law. So this is from the Boltzmann equation. Using method moments after second order balance flows. Then, assuming there's a shear flow, this is what you got. All those equations become these four equations. So, we want to validate these laws using molecular dynamics. That was my concept. So, why we are doing the molecular dynamics? Because I already done using DSM. See, DSM is more like metal scale. And therefore, I'm interested in experimental data or some principal uh, microscopic simulation data, so which is molecular dynamics. So, <coughs> let me remind you what that exact solution looks like. The press is one plus content here, and the QY is and then to the power of three. And then Navier Stokes QX is zero, but we have the many terms here. They become this kind of things. The velocity is parabolic, but the tandem scale parabolic. Navier Stokes is just a, there is this one, S scale is parabolic. And the temperature profile is look like cosine function or some F function which is given as cosine. That's why we have tandem uh, function here. On the other hand, the stock solution is just cut it as a part of all. So those are differences in mind. <coughs> and then just uh, before we are talking about this one, this is comparison. So because my objective is to validate constitutive law. Constitutive law means Horizontal axis is thermodynamic driving force. The viscosity and the velocity gradient is divided by pressure. So in this case, I use central velocity because pressure is changing. And this, this axis. And then this one is shear stress. So now the stop says the stair drive. In this particular, in this case, uh, from minus 3 and uh, point 3. As you can see, in the case of the shear stress, not much difference, either Navier Stokes star line or second order NCCR, what DSMC open circles, or MD the solid circles. That was expected because all those non Navier, non free areas appear not necessarily shape, but normal. So this is uh, Normal stress, pi y1. So Navier Stokes strict in general. As you can see, this is second order analytical solution, probably tangent scale. Then we have seen before, this is the solution. And this is n. Even though there are some gaps, qualitatively, that is similar. So uh, I will explain what the, those uncertainties can be, because each method has different some implementation. So in general, anyway, this is a second order solution purely that represents those kind of ellipses. Uh, Dr. Rana, we uh, got the solution. 
Ну, здесь это очень важно приветствовать. Большая ответственность. Мы не приветствовали нашу маму, просто не приветствовали. Да, приветствовали. Да, приветствовали. Like we are non-dimensional things, even the boundary and everything are also non-dimensional things, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everything is non-dimensional because navy source is would be applied in a bigger domain. And MD is applied in a very small domain. So when we non-dimensionalize, are we taking care about the physics or are we No, no, this is the same because we non-dimensionalize. Therefore, what you're saying is and the text of we uh, make the Lucent number is exactly close the same. And therefore, all those things should be the same scale. So then, uh, how are we accounting for the wall effects? We are making the Lucent number same, but are we... Yeah, yeah, we are implementing all the boundary conditions. In the case of Navier Stokes, in this case, Langmuller sleep, Langmuller jump conditions. In the JSMC, it has own accommodation, the boundary condition. And the, it has not necessarily that kind of thing. The platinum, the argon, the potential interactions. So how are the uh, body conditions of that for the DSM effect is uh, manageable? Well, because we didn't produce uh, our own DSM result, but I expect not that difference. Uh, this is a proof of accommodation. So that's what normally what people do. Proof of division of common division. Typically people use either 0 or 1 for the normal uh, in this case, I think the diffusion wall is the most uh, typical one. Okay. Yeah. If you change the diffusion wall a little bit, then you will change a little bit more, but not that big difference. Okay, there, there was a, not our GSMC result, it's the result from, we took from the literature. Okay, this is very interesting one. So in previous case, the Naviello, or not Naviello. So, what that means is the previous one is we were able to validate those stress constraints. Remember, stress constraint is part of the technological concept of law. Now this the short part is the Navier law is enough. But the uh, normal short, normal stress, this kind of law, stress constraint constraint is existed, and then and this show exactly the same trend. And then the free law, non free law. So again, free law is about driving force. In this case, thermal conductivity and the temperature gradient divided by some non dimensional And then this is the, what is the QY is normal with flux. So basically, it is very similar. Because this is normal with flux. Standard and heat flux, Navier stocks, all others will be very different. But except here, this is, I mean, this is Navier. Navier and the three, which where, I mean, I ignore those A terms. A, pi, x, y. Remember, uh, in this constitution, that term was very important. One, one plus pi, y, y, and the P, and then I think two y, zero. And then we have important one is this one, A pi x y something like this. This is coupling effect. That was responsible for the same minimum, so on. So Navier law means we are not taking that terms. Then just uh, as expected. Uh, there's the first uh, temperature gradient. Linearly, we have the terms. But uh, due to these terms, you know, others, this, this is we call heat transfer from cold to hot. Because of that, this is second order solution. This dark line is, again, you can see the S curve. And the dark line is molecular dimension. So, uh, again, the MD demonstrates this kind of the molecular So, this is Z, and then also second order R. Ultraman solutions. And then this is tangential reflux. So free law, it is strictly charged. So you can see how it can be uh, grossly wrong. Money just zero. All the other second order scale is not zero. 
So this is again general trend is very similar. So this line is a second order, some kind of tangent function. And then this dark open circle is this and see. As you can see also we change this like this one. More like a dot. It again it's about uh, some uh, non free behavior. Also MD and this and see. So uh, this way one can validate those uh, mathematical constitutive laws using molecular dynamics. This is final run is uh, pressure. This is pressure. This is not constitutive law. I just comparing uh, those the, the channel. This is lower, this is upper load, and then this is pressure. So one means this is center pressure, this is minimum. Then one plus tangent scale, this is second order and social solutions. And then we have seen before this is data, there is some change this one. And then I was immediately after seeing this DSMC data, I thought this is something, some, some kind of error. So I was interested in how MD allows that. And then this is MD. Even though there's fluctuation, generally there's no, yeah. um, um, I mean, because it's a qualitative change. So I couldn't find any reason why this should be here for. Uh, at this moment, because MD tells us just like the second order uh, the solutions, this, this, even though it's a small one, so it's a statistical calculations. But the, this, this part one, this particular point is somehow should be good thing. I don't know how, but uh, maybe post processing of the SMC data is uh, carefully in my head. Anyway, this is so. Uh, this is a little bit uh, beyond my expectations. I mean, whenever you do blind test, then uh, from my experience, it is not that uh, easy to get what you expect. There is always something going wrong. Uh, not that agreement on so on. But uh, in this, this case, uh, I think how uh, it is Yeah, it's a wonderful result. So uh, probably somebody else uh, uh, the, he produced this thing. Because Dr. Ryan produced this one. But I took so much believing. Nonetheless, it's like to uh, have another uh, production of these things. That would be difficult. From a different code or so. So I'm open that one. But I'm pretty much sure that because when I develop second order those the punchable laws, the logic is because it's simple, right? Yeah. And therefore, uh, at this moment, this is will be true. Uh, before that, I just mentioned some uh, which one to be. Not this one. Yeah, it's this one. So implication is uh, validate for the uh, this problem using deterministic atomic level microscope MD. Uh, therefore, emphasis was placed on three different second order continuum theory and the probabilistic mesosphere SNC and deterministic microscopic MD, how they describe the same problem. That was my original objective. Yeah. And also critical part is those of in cost processing. I should mention some oh here's then I will back those two years. So it's qualitatively strong agreement with each other. The level of the agreement is higher than expected, considering the uncertainties that may arise from. So, which means, I use three methods, but each of the methods that Kishore mentioned, there's some uncertainties. What is that? Different types of gas. In my field case, it's Maxwellian. The distance is constant. <coughs> And, R, and the test MD is R1. 
so that uh, there is some uncertainty in valve is not exact molecules. Also, different treatment of the gas wall molecular interactions. In my case, accommodation coefficients in form of the alpha or langer silicone condition. In the case of the DSMC, it's diffusive interactions. In the case of R, the MD, it's LJ interaction parameter. So it's completely different principles. And therefore, even though it tried to do the same thing, but nonetheless, there are uncertainties. We do think difference into accounts and then those qualitative the trend. This is blind test. The, uh, therefore, those physics I explained is this day, this month, that, 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 that uh, the message the, I call legitimate in the, at this transition regime, the person number is. Then uh, go back to the some this one. So again, this is pressure. I mean the level is certain. I remember it is in the seven or eight years. The RGD conference, the research using R thirteen presented this kind of the pressure. But to me, I mean. This, if you accept this is mismatch, then R13 also is mismatch. So this kind of things. And R13 represent present this kind of very maybe too amplified or my model effects. On the other hand, the JSMC is somewhere here. SSL is a little bit underestimated in comparison with the SMC. But then you should remember the difference. This is Australia, the SMC is hard sphere and so on. Therefore, that's why I always uh, emphasize that don't try to dot to dot the limit. There must be reason for differences. Important one is correlative and like this. Even though I accept this kind of deviation, but I will not accept this kind of quality. So again, this is velocity profile. So as you can see, not that different. Either MD, JSMC, even Navier stocks. I mean, Navier stocks is this dark one. The NCC is more light. At least this is not point to one. Look like the same. And then this is the temperature. So this is Navier stocks. This is a kind of theory. This is the SNC, and this is molecular dynamics. Definitely there is central. The temperature minimum is there. And this is the density. So this is dark line is MD. Look like this one. Qualitatively similar. The reason why uh, the Navier stocks is smaller because uniform pressure. Because uniform pressure, the density is P over divided by the temperature. Therefore, we have the smallest uh, density. So that difference is due to uniform pressure. So that tells you the critical uh, aspect of the pressures. So I explained already this one. Okay, so I think this is the end of uh, MD. Thank you, Thank you. So, any questions? So, that LJ parameter which is used for uh, argon and platinum uh, using the mixing rules. Mm -hmm. Like, there are uh, various number of mixing rules which are available. Mm -hmm. So, and we have tried with different mixing rules. Mm -hmm. We found that the results are also. Uh, so, depending on that one. Yeah. Huge change. Yeah, I mean, sometimes. Yes. And, like, Big difference. and some of the literature, they do say that that parameter, calculating the value from that uh, mixing rule is not right. Mm -hmm. So, in some of the cases, we observe adsorption. 
carefully about MD. Uh, that's my honest answer. Nonetheless, if you say there's anyway many options and you don't, you don't have the logic to support some of those, then typically what you can do is uh, check, let's say you can try method one, two, and three, on, and then check the velocity and temperature and so on. The fundamental things. Whether or not which one gives you something you expect is from the continuum descriptions, the right temperature jump or right character slip, and so on. Then might be one way to look at that approach. Otherwise, you have to develop your own argument based upon what the principle. Why that among many other options, why that should be. So you should carefully separate the physical problem and also the numerical problem. Sometimes I'm, I'm not good at MD, but nonetheless, those mixing rules, those things, it's about some numerical issues, then you should separate from the physical issues and so on. So it's one thing you try, your code base provides something different, but quite another, why you are doing that? And then every time you get different solution, you, there must be some logics. Otherwise, you cannot proceed where you got there. And then, that's some case that will frustrate. So, so uh, yeah, that's a good point. I didn't realize that. But I know that depending on mission rule, all kinds of things, yeah. I mean, using MD is more like a very, uh, I say, uh, state of art business. So, so, you need to discuss a lot with some of your colleagues. Probably your supervisor will have the answers. Is between laser, you know, out of convenience, like yeah. the car and virtual or uh -huh. fixing those. Yeah. I mean, mostly in use because of the convenience. You, know, you have the two parameters, you geometric mean of the two mm -hmm. will give you the uh, interaction between the two different angles. Okay. But yes, uh, as you rightly uh, mentioned, if we go a little deeper mm -hmm. and do probably a kind of analysis using AMT or so, mm -hmm. we can you get to yeah, but right. yeah, in the end, we need that kind of theory. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so your answer is 